Hello and welcome to another D-Spot episode, today reporting for TYT Sports. My name is Diego and I am joined today by Jason Pettigrove, who I'm very excited to have on the show today, not only because he's the senior sub-editor of Marca English, but in particular because he's an old friend of mine, dating all the way back to the Peña Blaugrana days in, what was it, 2005, six, just when the Peña Blaugrana was still, we were still about a handful of people there. Uh, that's where I got to know Jason the first time. So, Jason, a very warm welcome to the show, and it's good to have you. And it's good to be here. It's good to see you. You're looking very well, so looking forward to chatting. Absolutely, absolutely, Jason. And, uh, well, without any further ado, I'm going to get right into the midst of the action because I was reading one of your articles earlier today. It's probably the hottest topic in football or in sports, I should say, these days namely the topic of journalism and the way in which uh, news these days is delivered. You uh, drew the obvious example of obviously the Ronaldo and the Neymar cases. And uh, just to give a little intro to our audience, uh, your your base around the argument, what really, I guess, got you, what, what triggered you or what rubbed you the wrong way was seeing Ronald McDonald lead the players out into the field in the Man United Real Madrid game yesterday. Is that right, Jason? Yeah, well, I think the article that you're referring to is what I say in it is about this phrase that we have now called modern football. Correct. And people of a certain age, we're traditionalists, which I don't think actually is a bad thing. I mean, football is a traditional sport. And we've been moving both in journalism ways and also the way that football is, is played, the, the areas that it's played in, you know, China, America, etc. It's just too much. I mean, Ronald McDonald coming out on a pitch leading out Real Madrid and Manchester United. What the hell is that about? Come on. You know, it's, it's embarrassing. And, and we saw what happened. It, it went like wildfire all over Twitter. Yeah. There's been other articles, I think, that have referred to it. Yeah. I mean, you know, that sort of takes away from, from the main argument, which is how, uh, you know, in my opinion, the way news is digested these days. Exactly. But, but that was the thing that just, just got me. I, I'm watching the game to report on it. <laughs> And out comes Ronald. I mean, I just honestly, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was a sight for sore eyes, and and just something that it it just didn't look right, did it? I mean, uh, just seeing him, just this this epicenter of everything that is wrong in the world of marketing and consumption these days. Uh, that person, that particular character, I should say, leading out these legendary football clubs out into the pitch was that that was certainly not a high point in football. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, you then progressed onto or into the whole topic of journalism. Uh, and that is really the topic that I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, and please, um, if you just want to expand the, what, what exactly about those two cases uh, rubbed you the wrong way again. Well, no, well let, let's break it down from the beginning. So journalism per se, it, you know, the literal translation is somebody that earns their living from writing, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean someone that sits in their armchair 24-7, looks on the internet, and just as quickly as they can, gets, you know, all manner of news, you know, and wants to get it out first and fastest. I think there was something at one of the Oscars or the Grammys, I think it was Denzel Washington or somebody said that th there's this... Um, almost like this passion to be first with everything. Yeah. And, and it, you sort of lose the news almost. It's like it's the information that you're getting. It's just like, bah, 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 bah. yeah, it's, there's a lot of rubbish that surrounds what is the central sort of feature. Absolutely. And in, ter in terms of Ronaldo and Neymar, the, the issue I was getting at with them is that they've actually perpetuated hmm. a lot of what's been going on at the moment. We had Ronaldo uh, or I think it was, um, was it Abola, the Portuguese newspaper had come out and said he wants to leave Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. it, he, I don't think at the time, actually came out and said anything, but then obviously we had that huge blow up. And yeah. so it, it rolled on, it rolled on. Yeah. Was was it about money? Yeah. I think probably it was. Mm. And his whole, his whole, uh, more money or, or, or his financial obligations with Hacienda, the, the tax collector here. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then that sort of diverts the news away from that. Neymar, we've had, you know, the thing last night with PK saying he stays. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are we having uh, a teammate mm. of, of a player actually sort of breaking news? Mm. What, are you saying why aren't the journalists the ones reporting this or why are club representatives not uh, reporting this first or what, what is your issue there with Pique being the one that uh, took that initial step to 
But no, the issue is not even over, is it? I mean, we don't no, even no, no. know. Yeah. The issue of clubs have an obligation to journalists to mm. provide them with information. You have certain uh, newspapers that are aligned with certain clubs. We don't need to say who they are because people know who they are. Mm-hmm. But, but there's a protocol there. Mm-hmm. And, and essentially, I mean, it's happened with PK before. Mm-hmm. Essentially, what's happening is if you want to refer to the journalist as the middleman, mm-hmm. you're, cut, you're now cutting out the middleman. So you're setting a very dangerous precedent. Mm-hmm. Journalists, the best journalists, the people like Guillaume Balaguet, Sid Lowe, Graham Hunter, mm-hmm. if you refer to La Liga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They know their stuff, they have their contacts, you know, they get in behind all the noise mm. and they give us the proper news, which is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. It's not it's not fluff, it's not rubbish. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is a lot of what everyone else pushes out. Right. And I think with PK, he's now taken on the role almost of the journalist. So he's he's bringing the news directly from the dressing room. Mm. So then where does where does that leave the journalist? Mm. Mm. I guess he's just just one other pawn because uh, again the the news is still going on there's still no word of Neymar uh, whether he is actually staying or not there's still articles coming out uh, talking about the opposite uh, you know that that in fact there's still no agreement between Neymar's father and the board of directors of Fubo Club Barcelona um, but, but, but equally let, let me jump in there okay Let's assume, as you say, that it's not over mm. and that he could still go to PSG. Mm. Then, then why is he allowing himself to be photographed on yeah. social media, yeah. knowing what PK is going to put as a caption mm. with with the picture? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think last within an hour last night, there was over a hundred thousand retweets and likes and whatever. Yeah. And again, that's how a lot of people get their news. They look at Twitter and they believe that is the news. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 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 And we know, And we know about things going viral, so mm. then you get you, you get people looking at second-rate websites, and mm. I say that with, with respect. Mm. And then, then it's like that, that's gospel. Mm. Here, here, here is the news. I've got it from you know wherever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's it's you're you're absolutely right with what you're saying. I, I myself, uh, I found myself being one of those people who were just glued to Twitter for the past 48 hours. Uh, in particular, to the the uh, on on the page of the journalist who initially broke this whole Neymar story, which was uh, a Brazilian journalist here based in Barcelona, uh, and it and, and after 48 hours, I think after the post of Deep Pique, I kind of I felt uneasy with myself as well because you know you're so dependent on the word of this one person who has this unconfirmed source. Yep. And as you said, that is the gospel that became the Bible uh, for this past 48 hours to find out any update whatsoever. Uh, yep. and, and I came across a really interesting quote from Tony Freixa, who you will know undoubtedly. Uh, for those who don't, Tony Freixa was a, a, an ex board of director of Football Club Barcelona, ex uh, presidential candidate as well. And he posted on Twitter, uh, and I translated this from, from Catalan, but he said, the problem of sports journalism is wanting to break a story which hasn't happened yet in order to be the first to tell it despite it not being true. And I thought that that was a quote that, that basically summed up In, in, in a perfect way, exactly the epidemic that is going on these days with Twitter, it becomes this hunt of, of being part of the news story and, and, and delivering it, even though sometimes it is not even true. I mean, you know, nobody knows whether today, whether Neymar is, is leaving or staying in this case. Um, so it's, it's, it, it's, it's awkward, isn't it? It leaves us as journalists in an awkward position because what you don't want neither, and I don't know about your feelings, but what you don't want neither is only to be to have that selective group of people say the Guillaume Balaguer, the Sid Lowe's, Graham Hunters as you mentioned to be the only people with access to those sources right I mean it should be accessible to, to more I mean that that is what hopefully uh, allow, well, allows us to keep our jobs isn't it yeah I think uh, people like Balaguer and, and Sid Lowe and Graham Hunter they, they are you know they've been doing this a lot longer than you or I have mm. I think potentially the issue comes when you've got people that are just really looking for retweets. I mean, you just say, said what Tony Fraser says. It's this need, this constant need to break news. And the news might not even be there. Mm. But I don't know. It's not a popularity contest. For me, this is my business. This is what I do. Mm. Mm. You know, whether you know I'm popular doing it or not, you know, the only thing for me is I want my bosses to be happy with the work that I produce. Mm. When you've got people that just want to, you know, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever 
uh, means people use now. Mm. I mean, again, it's, it almost cheapens the, 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 the role of, of, of the proper journalist, if I can call, call one that. I mean, and and who, who, are, who are to blame? Is it the, the, the journalists or the players? Again, we, we go back to what I said at the very beginning, modern football. I, I think back to when I was a, a young kid in East London and, and my local team at the time were West Ham and I could go to a West Ham game and you could wait in the car park, the journalists could wait in the car park before and after the game, you'd get whatever quotes you wanted and, and it was fine, that, that was the news. And for a young kid, it was great, you got to meet your heroes. Now supporters don't get to meet their heroes unless they're very lucky mm. and journalists are only fed what the club want them to have mm. and so the players will be given a script I and mean, i don't know that necessarily that you blame the players they have their agents they have their pr representatives mm. I've, i've done interviews before even in barcelona uh, one reporter was one that i had and i wanted to get underneath what he was saying because i knew what he was going to say before he said it but you've got a pr sitting be beside him and Oh, it's just like okay this is what he's going to say yeah. and that's what you're going to get and you just have to get on with it yeah. so do you blame the player I'm not sure I blame the player mm. I'm, not, I'm not even sure I blame the clubs necessarily but it's just, again it's the way it's become yeah. you're you're given what they're happy to give you and that's the end of it mm, mm. And, 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 and with regards to obviously there's a lot of skeptics out, out there a lot of skeptical people in particular again related or going back to the Ronaldo and Neymar situation because they openly didn't come out and say anything themselves a lot of people will say well these are just uh, stories fabricated, fabric, fabricated by journalists in order to like you said increase in popularity via social media or increase newspapers is there any truth to that as well i think you have to sell newspapers and in terms of websites as well whichever website you have it's all about the clicks that's not in any way to suggest that whatever's being put out in any of those media is inherently wrong because it's not a lot of a lot of it is opinion based sure. and it's, it's not fact Mm. And then the other stuff, you, you pick up bits. Again, it's part of being a journalism. You do a bit of digging. You try and find out things, and then you offer that information. Mm. I think, you know, perhaps the audience that is receiving that information takes uh, the wrong part of it. And so, okay, so he said this, when in actual fact, that the journalist hasn't said what the audience believes he has said, if, that, if, if that's making no, sense. I understand, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Neymar, I think every day for the, the last few days, all we've heard is, you know, Neymar's going, you know, Neymar's staying, uh, Neymar's dad is making him go. Mm -hmm. And come on, you know, it's not, it's not journalism. Uh, well, ju just to wrap up our, our interview, um, I'm giving you your moment to shine. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, is there is there any information, anything out there with regards to Ronaldo uh, or Neymar that you know of that that you can shed some light to? No, no. I mean, there is something, but I'm not at liberty to say. So you'll oh, find out. Nice one, keeping us in suspense. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is it from my end. Um, Jason, please let our audience know where they can follow your work, uh, your Twitter, Facebook handles, etc. Sure. Uh, Twitter is just simply at Jason Pettigrove and Facebook is at Jason Pettigrove Journalist. Very, very simple. Good stuff. Guys, I will make sure to uh, put the links in the description below. So check it out and make sure you follow Jason. He has done some excellent interviews with footballing legends, the like of David Villa, uh, Raul de, bueno, Del Bosque, uh, Joan Laporta. Yeah. Uh, as well as in September, he will be flying here to Barcelona to interview the one, the only Pele. And I'm right. very much looking forward to that. Absolutely. So are we. So are we, Jason. Once again, thanks a lot, Jason, for joining me on D-Spot and TYT Sports. Guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel, of course. Make sure you like and share this video with all of your friends out there. And until the next time.